Does that make sense to you? I know where he's from. He's from Iran. You're Farsi. Yeah. I knew it. I was born close to Rasht. You were born there? Close to Rasht, yeah. My, my sister was born uh, in Qazvin. And we, I think we lived in Tehran too, my family. So you know Farsi? A little bit. Like, yak do se chora Yeah. Yeah. This is the Anjil. Yeah. Yeah. You're Muslim? By name? I'm a selective Muslim. Okay. Yeah. What does that mean? Selective? I mean, yeah, I mean, okay. um, I practice, but I don't practice every single, like, rule in Islam. For example, I don't do jihad. You know, I don't believe in it. Jihad? Jihad, you know that? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Killing, like... Killing people? Killing, like, those non-believers yeah. and... But it's in the Quran, force though. Them, it's yeah, in the Quran. force them to convert to Islam. But it's in the Quran. Yeah, but I don't, I don't believe in it. So you select what you like. You you unselect yeah. what you yeah, don't I, like. Yeah, I select whatever is close to humanity. You know. But what if the Quran commands you kill and fight the disbelievers? Yeah. I, I don't yeah. do that. Surah nine twenty nine. So yeah, I know. So why do you follow a faith that tells you that? I know you don't believe that, you don't follow that. Yeah, I mean, I follow whatever closest to humanity. It could be like, a, I don't know, Christianity, it could be Islam. It could okay, be let, like, me, let me give you a verse from the Bible, okay? From the Anjil. So, <laughs> Jesus said, love your enemies. Yeah. Love your enemies. The Quran in Surah 9, Ayah 29, Allah says, fight those who do not believe in Allah, nor the last day. Yeah. Fight them. Not in self-defense. Yeah. So, uh, in this case, I, I could be a selective Christian as well. <laughs> no, 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 no. You have to... You can't be selective. You have to take it all or throw it all. I don't think so. If Allah commands you as a Muslim to go fight the disbelievers, and you say, no, I don't want to do that. But also, he said, I don't know, Jesus said, this, said something else, you know, it's like from the God as well, right? Well, Jesus said, love your enemies. Yeah, so, so we believe that both of them are from, like, selected from God, right? I don't believe Muhammad is from God. I, I, I believe Muhammad is from Shaitan, to be honest. I'm not saying that to offend you. I'm just speaking the truth. Yeah, you know, like, these days, everybody believes in something. Take care, it's my... So, I don't know, I'm not... I don't know who's right and who's wrong. I just follow my heart. Can I share a verse from the Bible with you? Okay, um, do you want to so, share another one? Yeah, just one more, one more. Okay, sure. So, in uh, the Old Testament, the Tanakh, mm -hmm. uh, there's a prophet named Jeremiah. Okay, this is the Old Testament. And in Jeremiah... It says, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I test the mind, even to give every man according to his ways, according to the fruit of his doings. So here in the Bible, God says through Jeremiah that the heart is deceitful above everything else and wicked. So you may be deceiving yourself. I don't know about trusting your heart. I don't know, but in Christianity, I know you should believe in God by heart and you shouldn't question it. I mean, believe it, in God with all your heart. Yeah, so it's like, it's but, like you, you follow your heart, right? No, I, I follow Christ. I follow the Word of God. So if I follow heart, my right? heart, yeah, yeah, the, your heart, the Word of God and Christ is in my heart. So you have it in your heart, right? Yeah, the Word of God I have in my heart. So can you, can't you say like your heart is sealed? No, like no, because I trust in the Word of God. If I follow my own heart, I could be going a certain way and not going towards the truth. There's another verse in the Bible that says, uh, there's a way that seems right to a man. It seems right, but the end, the akhirit, the end, is the way of death. It seems right to you, but the end is the way of death. But the truth is the Word of God. Now the question is, which one is the Word of God, the Quran or the Bible? 
or Hindu uh, literature or Buddhism or so you know that's a whole different topic but right now since you're a selective Muslim and I'm a Christian which one is the word of God I used to be a Muslim uh, until I looked into the Anjil you know that verse love your enemies that changed my heart there's not one ayah in the Quran that says love your enemies not one that's not one yeah. I'm just saying I'm stating facts yeah so the value of Christ and his teachings supersedes the teaching of Allah, the God of Muhammad. I take it into consideration. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's good. What's your name? Hussein. Hussein? Oh, me too. Hussein. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Nice to meet you. <laughs> that's good. Yeah, listen, uh, 16 years ago in April 2007, my friend gave me the Anjil. Well, he gave me the New Testament and it has the Gospels in it. And I read uh, the Gospel of Matthew. There's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mm -hmm. I read Matthew and I read that verse, love your enemies, and I, it changed my heart. Then I understood the Gospel, like the good news, that the Messiah, mm -hmm. he, he loves us so much that he shed his blood. You know Qurbani? Yeah. He sacrificed himself for you and for me. But you have a choice to make. You can either, you can either accept him or you can reject him. You know, everybody is responsible for their own, like their own um, sins. Sins. They're like anything they do. You know, they're responsible for for it like completely. So no one else should should be punished for your sins. You know. Have you committed sins before? Yeah, I guess everyone. Okay, does. so you're gonna be responsible for your sins. Yeah. And then when you die, you're yeah. going to Jahannam. Yeah. Uh, does that concern you at all, or? Mm. No, I take the responsibility. No. Oh. Well, listen, that's the bad news. The good news is someone took your punishment for you on the Salib, on the cross. I know, by the... 2,000 years ago, Isa ibn Maryam, as you know, the Messiah. Yeah, but it doesn't make sense to me. Hold on, hold on. Because okay. you haven't... Have you looked into it? Yeah. You've read the Anjil? Yeah. Well, what have you read in the Anjil? Tell me. So, it says like... I don't know. Like, um, how can I put it? So, they... Um, crucified them yeah and then that's a historical fact yeah I know okay and but the Quran in Surah 4 says that Isa ibn Maryam was not crucified nor was he killed yeah so that's a historical error that's a historical contradiction yeah the Quran in Surah 4 I'm sure you're familiar with it it says that he he never died Allah put someone that appeared like him that's a deception have you heard the title Khairul Makarim? Mm -hmm. The Great Deceiver? Yeah. That's Allah's name. That's one of Allah's attributes. Allah tricked the disciples, the followers, his mother was there. Everyone was there. And they saw this man that looked like Isa die, but actually wasn't him. That's a deception. So either Allah is a deceiver, or you look into history, and Christ, the Messiah, Jewish man, sinless. He claimed to be God and he died on the cross because he loves you. If you owed the bank $10,000 and I love you, and I'm like, you know what? I'll give the bank $10,000 and the interest to you. How does that now make sense? And you're free, you're good to go. Your debt is gone. So in the eyes of God, sins are like debt. See what I'm saying? The Bible says the wages of sin is death. Do you work here? Yeah. Okay, so you earn money when you work here. Mm -hmm. Okay, the Bible says every time you sin, lying, stealing, uh, slandering, gossiping, every time you sin, you're deserving death and qiyamah, judgment. But in Christ, because he, he took that away, you're free. When we go to the Old Testament once again, there's a verse in, this is a prophet named Amos. Mm -hmm. Amos chapter 3, uh, verse 7 says, Surely the Lord God does nothing unless He reveals His secret to His servants, the prophets. So, God doesn't just do something arbitrarily or randomly or just does it. He first reveals it to the prophets and then He does it. So then when it happens, we'll say, okay, that, that, that was a prophecy and He fulfilled it. Where I'm getting at is, if you go to Isaiah, chapter 53. Now, I'm not going to read the whole chapter because it's long. 
you can remember this, Isaiah 53. This was written 700 years before Jesus came to earth. And here, when you read it, it's the crucifixion. It's a prophecy of what's going to happen, the crucifixion. You see what I'm saying? Are you following what I'm saying? Yeah. So God says that He first reveals His secrets to the prophets. So then when it happens, we can believe, we can be assured that this is from God. So 700 years before Christ was born, Isaiah wrote, the whole chapter is about the crucifixion. Like, I don't want to take too much time reading it to you, but you can read it for yourself. Um, that's just one example. Maybe you're right, maybe I'm right. I don't know. That's okay. You know, I, I don't say you are not right, and I don't say I'm not right. So, I cannot, I cannot be sure about anything, you know? So, I don't know, maybe in the judgment day, like, we will, we will know. That's too late. You I don't, don't want to risk your ruh, your spirit, your soul. You don't want to risk it, man. You know, God exists, you know God exists, and you have a conscience, right and wrong. Yeah, but, I mean... You don't want to risk your soul, I don't based I, on, I, I don't know. I do my best to, to be a good person, and I don't know, I just try to consider God, not, not the prophets, you know, like try to be close to Him, Himself. So... How can I put it? Like, you know, I, I don't care about heaven or hell. And whatever I do, I just do it for the God Himself. So, what do you do for God? Just try to be a good person, kind to people, you know. Do you think you're a good person? I think so. I'm trying. Trying to be a good person, trying to be kind to people, nice to them, try to say good things to them, you know, try to be honest, don't say lie. I guess these are the things that also God loves to see, you know, and then at the end of the day, um, since I, I've done everything just for him, if he says like, it wasn't enough, so you had to do more than that, I, I will accept it, you know? And okay, but this is your chance to realize that the truth is that His standard is perfection. This is your chance to understand this. He's holy. God is 100% holy. He's perfect. So His standard is perfection. Do you see what I'm saying? I don't think so. Let me show you a verse from the Old Testament. <laughs> Let me show you a verse. Look at this. So again, I'm going to go to Isaiah. Okay, go to Isaiah. Isaiah 64, verse 6. Mm -hmm. But we are all like an unclean thing, and all our righteousness are like filthy rags. Parukona, is that how you say it? Parukona in Farsi? Parukona. Paru, it means uh, cloth. How do you say cloth in Farsi? Parche. Parche. How do you say old? Kone. Kone. Okay, parche kone. There you go. <laughs> so... It says here, but we are all like an unclean thing. We're all unclean. And all our righteousness or our good deeds are like parcha kona. So imagine you're taking a filthy cloth, presenting it to God and saying, here, God, I present it. He's not going to accept it. So your good deeds, your righteousness. So how do you know he wouldn't accept it? The word of God says so. Isaiah said so. Your righteousness is like a filthy cloth. I don't think so. Look, look, going back to the question, you said you think you're a good person, you're kind, you say nice things, you do good things. Yeah. Have you heard of the Ten Commandments? Yeah. So how many lies have you told? Hmm? How many lies have you told in hmm. your life? Me? Yeah. In, in, like in general? Yeah. Like if you look back at your life, how many lies have you told, do you think? Mm, I don't know. Not too many, I guess. Like one, two, three, four, like... I'm not sure. Actually, I'm not a. I don't see myself as a liar, so I don't. I don't remember like if I have lied. Sorry, you say you see yourself as a liar? No, I don't see myself as a liar. So you've never so, told a lie before. So I don't remember the last time I lied. You've never told a lie in your life. I don't know. You know, like as far as I remember, I don't remember if I if I lied. 
Yeah, you've never lied on a piece of paper. You've never lied on your time card, like being late. You've never <laughs> lied to a friend. No. I think as as far as I remember, I try to be honest. Okay. Yeah. Have you ever stolen anything in your life? No. You've never stolen anything. No. Oh, Why should okay. I steal anything? Okay. Have you ever uh, looked at a woman or a person to lust after them sexually in your heart? Maybe. I don't know. So, like, have you looked at someone and said, wow, I want to, and then had sexual thoughts in your mind? Are you married? Yeah. Are you single? Yeah, I'm married. You're married? I'm yeah. married too. Yeah, if I say like, no, I, I haven't, it's, it's a lie. So yes, sometimes it happens, you know, but I guess it's natural. So it's like, but it goes away, like, I don't know, it doesn't stay there. Okay, so Jesus said, he said, even if you look, even if you look at a woman, to look at a woman and lust for her in your heart, you've already committed adultery. Adultery is cheating on, on your spouse, right? Mm -hmm. In the Old Testament, adultery was punishable by death. So if, if, a, if a man in the Old Testament, you know, had sex outside of uh, their, his marriage, he would die. So, but Jesus said, if you, if you look at a woman to lust for her, in your heart, um, you've already committed adultery. It's a great sin. Um, so the point is, like, we've all sinned. If yeah, it's not one sin, it's the other sin. Yeah. If it's not this sin, it's the other sin. And God's, God's standard of uh, holiness is perfection. Does that make sense? He's a just God. He's loving, he's, he's gracious, but he's also just. So like any injustice, he'll punish. Any sin, he'll punish. Not because he, he hates you, but because he's just. But when you look at the cross, you see his love and you see justice. Because someone died for you, that was justice, and out of love he did it. So you get both at the same time. I will, I will think of it. That's good. Is it Hussein or Hossein? Hossein. How do you spell it? Hossein, like H-O-S-S-E-I-N. -S -S oh my goodness, that's how I spell it. <laughs> <laughs> that's so yeah. funny. Yeah, it was nice talking to you. Nice talking to you yeah. too. It's my right. pleasure. Yeah, you too, man. Yeah, thanks for your time. Can I give you a Gospel of John? Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like small. You can read it in like two hours okay. as a gift. Okay. Okay. It's not in Farsi. It's in English. Okay. That's yeah. good. <laughs> Just give me a second. Just conversing with a gentleman. An evolutionist, but I didn't, I didn't have a... It's, a, it's a gospel, John. Thank you. It's 21 chapters. It's one of the four gospels. So there's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Mm -hmm. This is the Gospel of John. Um, you know, when I, when I read the Gospel of Matthew, it changed my life. So I pray this changes your life, because it's the truth. Jesus said, He said, I am the way, I am the truth, I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through me, through, through Him. I'm already done. Do you want to say anything? I feel like I've talked a lot. Do you have any questions? or? You know, I don't know. I'm not that kind of stubborn person so I I don't know I think about different ideas and if I if, if it makes sense to me I will accept it. yeah yeah okay so far from what I've tried to explain to you does it make sense it makes sense I'm not gonna be offended if you say no it just means I didn't explain not, not all of it but some parts of it make sense okay yeah I know you have to go but what part didn't make sense just quickly, just so I know. Yeah, the part that Jesus paid for our sins mm -hmm. doesn't make sense to me. Okay. If you read the Old Testament, this is the New Testament. Okay. okay this is uh, during the time of Christ. If you read, if you read the Old Testament, mm -hmm. the prophets spoke about a suffering servant, the Messiah, the Messiah, mm -hmm. that yeah. he would suffer mm -hmm. for 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 mankind, that he would take the transgressions of us on himself read isaiah 53 it'll give you a clear picture okay it's the old testament isaiah 53. Uh, yeah. i will think of it think of that all right, all right. god bless you thank you have a great day